right? So we have a data sufficiency value question. We're asked for the perimeter of this triangle. And we know it's a right triangle, so we know it follows Pythagorean theorem. And that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And since we've been told that the hypotenuse is 10, that means c squared is equal to 100. Now the perimeter is going to equal a plus b plus 10. So we don't need to get a or b by themselves. We need to get a plus b. And if we can get them by themselves, that's great. But it might be overkill, and we need to be aware of that as we're going through uh, each of these answer choices. Now, the area in a right triangle is equal to a times b over 2. And so statement 1 says the area is 25. That means that a times b equals 50. And there's multiple scenarios for a and b that could multiply to get 50. It could be 1 times 50, 2 times 25, 5 times 10, etc. And if we see that these values give us inconsistent answers for a squared plus b squared, then I'm willing to bet that there's only one special mix of two values here that when you square them add up to 100. And I don't care which one's A and which one's B because we're adding them together at the end of the day here. So let's see what happens. If I plug one in for A, I get one squared plus 50 squared. Is that going to equal the same thing as if I took the five and 10 example, five squared plus 10 squared? Well. If they equal the same thing, I think it probably confirms that this is um, insufficient because we'd have multiple values that for a squared plus b squared, which would mean there's multiple a b's that would work for both this formula and this formula. But as we see here, this is equal to one and this is equal to 25 with two zeros on the end. So I get 2,500 and one here. Now in the other, in the other situation, five squared is 25 plus 100, which equals 125. So I get very different answers, which means there's probably only one situation where A times B equals 50, but A squared plus B squared equals 100. I'm going to say that this is sufficient. And notice I didn't prove it out mathematically. I just proved it out by thinking about, like I didn't prove it out with algebra, right? I didn't solve this problem all the way out. I just thought about it big picture. If there's more than one scenario that follows both of these rules, the Pythagorean theorem formula and the statement, then it would prove to be insufficient. But I'm betting that there's only one situation because when I messed with the numbers, they gave me inconsistent answers for a squared plus b squared, which means that they're not following this second rule. All right, statement two, the two legs are equal. Well, that means a squared plus b squared equals c squared is really like a squared plus a squared equals 100, which is 2a squared equals 100. This is definitely solvable for A. We're going to get A squared equals 50. And that means that A is equal to the square root of 50, which is equal to 5 root 2. Square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And if we have A and we know B is equal to A, then we can also solve B. So statement 2 is sufficient. And that means we have an answer choice of answer choice D. So again, thinking big picture about do we have multiple situations or not? Because in a value question, you need to nail this. It has to be exactly one value. But we're finding that if we have multiple situations for A plus B, if all of these had worked in this Pythagorean theorem, it would not have been sufficient. But because they gave different answer choices, different answers to A squared plus B squared, I bet there's only one special situation where they equal 100 while also following this rule. And that led us to a sufficient answer.